Hello there viewers and welcome back and in this video I'm going to talk to you about how to pot on or plant up noreens. Ah, looks good. They are and uh, let's go do that now. Now noreens, especially Bodenii, commonly known as the Guernsey lily, mm. is a superb choice for the garden. It's, uh, it's late flowering. It's uh, very, very hardy. In fact, it is the hardiest of the marines. So this one will go down to approximately minus 15, anecdotally. Um, this one also has a royal horticultural uh, wall of merit. Yeah. Um, RHS wall of merit. And it's always a great thing to, uh, if you can find a plant with an RHS. Um, has it got it on here? No, it doesn't. Oh, is it? Uh, can you see that? Yeah, there you go. So, you know, this has been tested by the RHS yeah. and they put their seal of approval. So, yeah. it's a great plant. Um, commonly known as the Guernsey Lily, although there is another marine called the Guernsey Lily. What? Yeah, there's a lovely red one called Scenariensis. Mm. Both called the Guernsey Lily. Neither of them are from Guernsey. Um, <laughs> Obviously. In fact, they're both South American. Uh, South African. South African. And this one was uh, sent over in the beginning of the 1900s by the uh, very posh sounded uh, Athelstan Cornish Bowden, which is why it's called Bowden here. Yeah. Anyway, so this one is going to go into the ground. Okay. We're going to start with this one. Now, yeah. typic the typical red one used to find a really good red marine, uh, Scenariensis, also called Guernsey, is not hardy. But this cultivar has been created, which is a cultivar of this. Now this is very hardy. This is not as hardy. So instead of putting this one in the ground, I'm gonna put this in a pot. Okay, let's go. Right, okay, so unfortunately, despite the price, you're only gonna get one. Wow, let's have a look. Ah, okay. And um, right, so I'm gonna use a trailer pot. All right. With all pots with holes in. <laughs> with all pots with holes in, if you put your soil straight uh, in there, the water's gonna leach soil at the bottom. So we put in some stones to cover it up, and we'll top that with some gravel. And then I'm gonna do a mix of 50% horticultural grit and multi-purpose compost in order to improve the drainage because noreens like it hot, sunny and dry. Fairly dry. Right, there you go, that's not bad. Right, and with planting these, you want the shoulders exposed above the soil level. Mm. You know these aren't true lilies. Really? Yeah, they're not lilies. They're actually um, from the Amaryllis family, so Amaryllidaceae, yeah. so yeah. which is why you get amnurines, that yeah. those hybrids. I was going to say that. Yeah, yeah, those garden hybrids now, the yeah. amnurines, which we do have. Um, I was going to say, don't we have some? We do, we do, we do. We actually have them in the garden. Oh. And they did flower last year, but we moved them because they weren't in a solar position. Anyway, back down to oh. here. Oh. Back down to here. back. So. Now, you could risk leaving this outside in the ground because it is fairly hardy, but I would only do so uh, in the, um, the south coast and warmer parts of the UK. Any further yeah. north, it's going to have to stay in a pot. In fact, we went to, um, we went to, what was that? Western Gardens, Western Gardens. They had a, uh, a glass house full of marine varieties. I can okay. put a little video they up. They did, yeah, that was really nice. So we've got a bit of a Noreen collection going on here. That's a great collection. Oh, mate. It's, the, it's the only place I've seen th this come. range of uh, Noreens coming. Yeah. So you can see Noreens are these bulbs. So we've got a few in our garden, hardy Noreens, and they, they come up nice sort of blade-like uh, leaves. And then they have these amazing flowers that come up that on these big, huge flower stalks, and they come up and aren't they gorgeous? But what a huge variety of Noreens. Yeah, that was really nice. It was really, really nice. Yeah. So all days is kept inside. Yeah. And they do look really good. But some years, some years where we've had down here yeah. where temperatures haven't even got to freezing, you could keep this in the ground outside. Further north, 
Okay. Just dip Perfect. it in. So anyway, we're going to go and plant these in the ground. Brilliant. Okay, so we're going to plant these in the rings. These are, as I said before, these are the hardiest, so these are great mm -hmm. for going outside. You want them in your, your hottest, dry, sunniest position of, that could be against the uh, a, a south facing wall at the bottom of the south facing wall or uh, the bottom of the greenhouse so it gets the heat on it. We're going to put these out um, just in a full sunny bed. Mm. Uh, I'm flying them here so that yeah, I can see yeah, something clearly seen in the autumn. Right. So what I've done. Okay. Is I've excavated just a low, a low yeah. section of, uh, of of soil because once again you're only planting these down to about about here, so the top half is exposed. So it's not like a daffodil no. area. Oh, you had quite a few in that bag. Yeah, oh, it's the bulk bag, bulk bag special. Last time we only had one. Um, but just to make sure that I have got good drainage because okay. I don't want to be kept in the wet. But yeah, they are. Really tough and hardy. I've never had a problem with these, never seen them with a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Biggest sign of impending death, oh, isn't it? Dear. Why did he say it? <laughs> Why did he say it? So you don't have to do this, okay. uh, but I'm going to do this. You've got a bag of grit and you're going to use it. Okay. <laughs> Alright, and uh, you usually plant these about okay. four inches apart from each other. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Don't need to add uh, fertilizers because it's a bulb and the bulb is yeah, it's been created to hold on, you know, and to cope with these uh, the, 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 you know, low uh, fertilizers and low nutrition. Mm. So otherwise, if you, if you treat them too kindly, they can stop flowering and just, yeah. just produce a load of leaf. Yeah. All right, so break that salt. Get back to work. Now, although I've said this, the RHS do recommend that if you're uh, planting these further north, where you do get very cold conditions, they say you can bury it, maybe up to a couple of inches below the soil. Mm, okay. But if you did that, when it produces side bulbs, yeah. it's still going to make itself rise up to the surface. Yeah. Any questions, Lorna? How long before I get some wonderful flowers? <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> you always ask that one. Well, well that's what <laughs> I want to know. That's what I'm paying the money for. Well, these actually aren't bad sized bulbs, so. Yeah, this year? You get a flower this year? I would like to think you'll get some this year. Look at me in the eye. <laughs> Flower. I'd like to think you'll get so because they're right, right at the end of the so. summer when pretty much everything else has finished flowering. So they're really noticeable when it's got that bright, shocking pink flower. Absolutely yeah. lovely. Okay. Um, these should be good. They should come into the ones we planted at the front, they are already in leaf. Uh, so expect these to come into leaf very, very soon. And really, um, end of the summer, early autumn. I think you should get some flour and we should find out. We should find out this year anyway. If they don't flower, then you can have a go at me. But yeah. usually you have a big mound of these, the whole thing flowers. So they might need to get a wee bit bigger. But I'm hoping this year. Okay. Can't start next year. That's the truth. Anyway. Fabulous. And well, there you go. If you have any Green. questions, then uh, leave them in the comments section. Thank you for watching. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.